Hi, here's Max and today I want to share with you the third album from the mini album series. This time it's an album that puts the focus on the paper collection itself. The Parisienne Blue from the capsule collection by Ducrafts is a very classy and expressive paper line. With the spine I wanted to support this classy style. It's made from navy blue cloth that is embellished with Swarovski rhinestones. In contrast to this, the back of the album is very simple in a white design paper with light grey dots. On the front I did a lot of paper flowers and some lace with a band of rhinestones. The intricate butterfly die stands as introduction for what we will see inside. So on the first page we already see a lot of flaps, of which the first one is held in place with two swing tabs. The second flap is held with a magnet onto the next layer. This flap then reveals the basis page, where a small pocket holds a big photo mat. I colored this with a stencil and applied washi tape and die cut corners as well as some modeling paste elements. The flip side I only stamped with some flourishes and left some room for journaling. As you will see this album has a lot of room for pictures in various sizes. The flaps are layered in a way that you can see the paper from each flap and how it corresponds to the others. This gives a wonderful overview over the various patterns of this gorgeous expressive paper. This next page has a magnet closure that looks like a belt. But in fact it's a belly band that is holding another small photo mat. This photo mat is held in place by a cardstock flower on the bottom of the page. So this time I don't show you the pictures at the end of this video, but I embedded them right at the time where we are talking about what they are showing. And I really hope you can see all the details. The other flaps of this page are simple ones that can be opened right away. And here I placed another intricate die cut on the navy blue page. As you may have noticed, I dropped the little paper pieces this time that I usually use to mark the places and the sizes of the photos. This is because I did not do much of embellishment, so it doesn't really matter where the pictures are put. But also this time we have big photo mats in the side pockets of each main page. The closure of these two flaps is a velcro dot, which is hidden behind the big label with the stamped butterflies. The big catch of this very vivid paper is that it only leaves little possibilities to do some journaling. That's why I prepared some simple tags, which I placed between the flaps. They are flexible and can be put wherever supportive text is necessary. The wonderful laced borders I did with a border punch by EK Success. For the big waved border I used a large ornament die from which I only covered the edges with the cardstock of the page. On the next page there is a small flap right in the middle of a larger one. This can be achieved by cutting a slot into the bigger flap and insert the smaller one there and glue it to the back side. On the next navy blue page I placed another white die cut where a picture can be tucked behind. These embellishments are deliberately simple to avoid the page of getting too noisy. And here again another photo mat in the side pocket. The next page has flaps on each of the edges that fold out into all four directions. The size of each of the standard pages is 16 by 16 centimeters. So overall I used two 6 by 6 inch paper pads and one 8 by 8 with 48 pages each. For the next embellishment I was putting package band in circles onto a basis flower. Then I glued another smaller flower and a button on top of it. Underneath there is another magnet building the closure of these two flaps. The flaps are building up the impression of a large envelope holding another tag for further journaling. And also here a big photo mat in the side pocket. I used a rhinestone flourish as embellishment on the next page, as it is classy but still decent. The flaps are opened to the top this time. I also used shaped paper clips and smaller die cuts as decent eye catchers. And below we have another pocket with another photo mat. 
Likewise, the first mat of this kind, I also used stencils and modeling paste to create an artful pattern. The back again offers room for supporting text. And here the next page already holds the next of these photo mats. And also here you have a detailed view. And also here the back of the mat is reserved for journaling. This time the pocket of the photo mat is built by another smaller pocket on the bottom where you can hide tags, tickets and other souvenir stuff. And of course another photo mat in the side pocket. But this time I want to take the opportunity to show you that each of the pages in this album is stitched to build up a very special look. And here another top folding flap that is held with a magnet onto the next layer. And this one here has again two swing tab closures. These swing tab closures are made with the tiny tabs and tags die by Sizzix and are fixed with a bread. On the next page I embellish the pocket with a metal clock by Tim Holtz and put a drip catcher underneath. This looks as if it would be a small doily. The pointers of the clock can still be moved, even that the wet glue I used makes it a little bit harder. This time there is a smaller photo mat behind the belly band. The clip at the top can be used to hold some more souvenirs or further pictures. And the subsequent flaps all follow the same pattern. Magnet closure and swing tab closures are set in alternate order and reveal more and more space for more pictures. And how surprising, another photo mat in the side pocket. The flaps on the next page are side folding flaps and here you can see again the variety of the design paper as well as the different borders. Overall a lot of space for tons of photos. I punched the belly band on the next page from both sides. Afterwards I glued some fringe border onto the band and put an intricate die-cut butterfly on top of it. The mat behind the band will again be held in place by a paper flower on the bottom of the page. And of course the edges are stitched as well. Here the flaps fold to the left again in a standard way. And again another tag for further text and notes. And underneath another navy blue page in the same style as the others. Likewise the others we have another intricate butterfly die under which a photo can be tucked. And here the last photo mat in the last side pocket. Here we have a lace butterfly that is also not entirely glued down so that the photo can slip under it. The smaller flap is fixed with another swing tab onto the next top folding flap. And here underneath we have the last of these photo mats in the same style as the others. Unfortunately I do not have a detailed picture this time. And the back cover is building the last page of the album. Here I built a large cotton cloth rosette, which I glued onto the closure of this big paper belt. This holds the other flaps of this page together without any further magnets. On the last flap I put a created by label, which I cut with an emboss lid by Sizzix. The last base page covers how the outside closure band is fixed onto the cover. This band is made out of the same cloth as the spine and I sewed some cords in beige and blue onto it. And this closes the walkthrough for today. So finally, I hope you had fun and if you would like to see the other two albums of this series again, here are the links. 
For all of you who are watching this on a mobile device, I put the links in the description box below. If you enjoyed watching, it would be great if you give me a thumbs up. And for all of you who didn't do it yet, I would love to have you subscribe, because this shows me that you like the stuff that I'm doing and that you want to see more. And whoever wants to leave me some greetings or wishes what to see next, please use the comments field below. I promise to answer every single one of the comments. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye bye!